Hey, how's that going? You got all your ducks in a row? Huh? You've got your toilet paper, your sanitizers, your nappies, napkins, diapers. What is wrong with you? Go to the store and buy it, you know? Hoard, baby, hoard. Don't you get it? I, I'm trying to make sense. Well, my glasses are uneven, of course. Duh, duh, duh. I hear I'll tell my hair like this. Uh, I'm trying to make sense of this uh, uh, COVID-19 or, you know, uh, coronavirus like everybody else. It just doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, I know, I, I believe that it's, uh, it is a virus and I believe that it's very contagious. I believe that uh, it was Russia's fault, not Russia's fault, but China's fault uh, for not notifying us quicker uh, about the about what they were experiencing with the, this virus. I, I really blame them almost entirely for 180 countries. I think it's up to like 180 countries or 181 countries or something that it's affected. I mean, it's infected the whole world. It's turned everybody's life upside down. It's locked people down. It's given, you know, it's taken away rights from people. All the deaths, I think right now, today we have, I think, uh, I, I, I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's about uh, close to 17,000 deaths, I think, so far in the United States. Uh, but, I, but I blame China for it. I don't think China's really our friends. Uh, that's the only thing that I really don't like about Trump is that he keeps referring to the, uh, whatever his name is, the head of China, that he's a great guy and he's a real friend. Well, if he was such a real friend and a great guy, then he would, you know, the Chinese government, or at least, or at least this great guy would have contacted Trump and told, you know, told them up front and sooner about the, the, the virus. And the Democrats, the Democrats are never happy about anything. First, they said that uh, uh, if you've been following everything, you know, first they say that Trump was biased uh, against China and, and uh, he wasn't fair to close the borders, you know, early. And now they're saying he didn't do it soon enough. What kept him, you know? They can't have it. They can't have it both ways, but they tried to have it both ways. They, they're so wishy-washy. The, the, the Democratic Party really makes me sick. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Maxine Waters and the rest of them, sickening. So sickening how they were uh, jeopardizing the uh, the two trillion whatever bill by putting things into it. You know the, the Democratic uh, Congress wanted before they would pass the bill to help Americans and small businesses and so forth. Sneaky, slimy bastards, evil demons. That's what I think of the Democratic Party. Anyway, me personally, I don't, I just think it seems, doesn't seem, something, something about this whole thing, uh, to me, doesn't seem right. Uh, everything is, you know, we've had the, what, uh, what is it, the N1, H1, or whatever you call it, H1, N1, and uh, different different viruses that we've had in the past, and uh, the whole world wasn't shut down. You know, the whole world wasn't shut down. I just honestly, I just don't get it. So I think something something just doesn't seem right to me. Where everything has happened so fast, the food shortages, shortages, and and uh, uh, 
you know, distancing from people and not being able to uh, go to beaches and parks and uh, uh, football matches or, or just to go out in general to be homebound, uh, self, you know, uh, quarantined in your in your home and only travel unless you really have to. Doesn't I mean, have they ever done this to any other virus? Closed everything down and closed all the businesses and tell tell people not to work and stuff. I mean, it's to me, it's either a, the, 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 the government's not telling us the truth on how bad it really, really is. I think that it's, that it's possible that they're hiding something from us. Let me turn like this so I'm straight. That they're hiding something from us and, and not telling us the truth about how bad this thing is. Or they're exaggerating it to try to take control of us. You know, they're trying to introduce things like digital currency. You know, the digital currency thing. And that's probably going to come. And uh, it's not going to be a good thing. But they're, they're, you know, taking rights away from us, you know. And uh, closing everything down instead of closing just the hot spots down or... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it all means, you know, but uh, I hear I hear people on YouTube talking about uh, it's a plan by the elites, you know, by the elites to uh, have one world government and, and uh, they're doing martial law, you know, the National Guard and the military. Uh, or making sure that, you know, you're where you're, you are and eventually you're going to have to have a, like a hall pass to go out and travel up the street, you know, and it's going to be a, a martial a law thing type situation. But, but, but there's something that's not right. There's just something that's, that's bigger that, that we're not seeing or they're not telling us. So anyway, um. I uh, I get depressed like everybody else, you know. I mean, I was I was doing I was doing good, you know. Uh, I do a lot of eBay, and uh, I've found that eBay is uh, not producing the sales that it did before the coronavirus uh, came, because people aren't just people are not buying stuff, you know. I not I don't sell toilet paper. Uh, the toilet paper I have, I'm keeping. Uh, but, you know, people just aren't buying things, you know. Uh, not lo not like they used to. Because, why? Because they're, cause they don't have much of a paycheck. $1,200 for a person that was, you know, working and now doesn't have a job. $1,200 isn't going to cut it. So now all of a sudden we're, you know, most people are out of work, uh, don't have the income coming in, and they're not going to have have money. They don't have money to buy a thing, so there goes my business. Anyway, uh, I hope that everybody's doing okay. Uh, I really believe that we can get through this. I believe that the worst is yet to come, or that it's going to drag on for weeks. I can see it probably... In all honesty, probably going through up until July or August, maybe further. Maybe it will go further than that. But uh, I've never seen anything in my lifetime that's like this. And uh, you probably haven't either, unless you're 150 years old. I guess 19, the flu ep ep epidemic of uh, 1917, I guess it was... Well, it was worse than this, but this this is unbelievable, you know. And Trump has his has his work cut out for him as far as getting the economy back. I mean, we had the greatest economy in the history of the United States, and uh, lowest unemployment, you know, rates, and uh, more people working than any other time in history, and different things. And bingo, it's it's just. It's gone. It's over with, you know. And the Democrats, I understand the Democratic Party 
They love this. They hope this virus thing gets worse and worse and worse so they can blame Trump for everything. Why didn't Trump do this? Why did he do that? Doesn't matter what Trump did. That's good. They'll never give him credit for it. They'll never ever give him credit for shutting the borders of China and then Europe and then the UK and so forth uh, early. And it's probably prevented thousands of people dying and at least giving us more time to prepare for things like ventilators or whatever. Uh, we'll never give them credit. They, they, they've never, why would they give them credit? They've never given them any credit about anything in the past. And this Governor Cuomo, whatever, whatever he is, is New York, you know, all Trump has done for him, he's, Trump has had uh, hospitals built for him, medical centers, all the ventilators and masks and gowns and everything that, that, that uh, they've sent New York. He really, he, he just, Cuomo, just, is it Cuomo? I don't know. I think it's Cuomo. He just doesn't act like he's appreciative of much of anything. He's always, me, me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Can't you say that President Trump is doing a great job, better than any other president would, could do? I mean, he's got like, what, 25 companies that are uh, changing their manufacturers' uh, assemblies, uh, or whatever you call it, so they can start creating these things like 3M or General Motors or GE or whatever it is. I mean, Trump is doing so much but he doesn't give him credit. It's me, 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 me. Anyway, I'm a little bit uh, upset at everything. And I, uh, I, you know, I, I believe it's going to pass. My church is having a fast on Friday, Good Friday. And I'm going to fast. And uh, I really think that that <clears throat> now is a great time to get right with God. And uh, if there's anything that you need to repent for, now's the time. Whether this gets worse or better or whatever, people need to repent including myself, and people need to forgive other people. I know it's hard to forgive people that are, have been wrong and, and assholes to you. I've forgiven people, and I put it in God's hands. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the hurt anymore that people have caused me. So I forgive him, and I put it in God's hands. There's a huge things lifted off my shoulder because of it. Uh, but anybody repent. Even if you know damn well that you're going to keep sinning, repent, try, repent and try, try, try. God knows your heart. If you just mutter words and you don't feel those words in your heart or your mind, he's not stupid. He knows exactly what you think, how hard you're trying, how hard you want to change. He knows all that. You can't, <laughs> there's no way there's no way you're going to con him. And I'm sure a lot of people have tried. Anyway, I, I want to give uh, a, a shout out to a man by the name of Garrett McCluskey. Thank you for your donation. And I'm going to put a link. He uh, 
ask me to maybe mention a few words about a singer by the name of Beverly Kenny. I've never I've never heard of Beverly Kenny before. And uh, I listened to some of her songs on YouTube, and, and she's great. She's great. She's kind of in the same category as, you know, like Doris Day and uh, just just people. I've, I'm going to put uh, four links. One is the uh, to Beverly Kenny, one of her songs. One is to Doris Day, one of her songs. And then one is Tony Bennett. Singing, I left my heart in San Francisco, but but he sang it so great. At, when the time that it was popular, a popular song, it was it was fantastic, um, and it meant something. San Francisco was a beautiful city to visit. I remember going there a few times and taking the you know cable cars up to Garadilly Square and having a nice big chocolate sundae and different things. And it was a beautiful city. When I was in high school, I went to San Francisco. In fact, I had a sister that lived there on Pine Street in San Francisco during the summer, uh, one summer. And so I went to visit her and I loved it. I remember walking down in the financial districts. Uh, I, I, I always wanted to be a stockbroker, which I did become uh, after I graduated. I studied and became a stockbroker, and but I remember, as a as a, a person from from high school, that going to San Francisco and walking down in the financial district of San Francisco, and you could just feel you could just feel the history of the city, the old buildings, the architecture, you know, and uh, thinking how it came back since the earthquake, the great earthquake of nineteen oh six. How it was rebuilt, but even even though it was rebuilt, uh, like in nineteen, you know, from nineteen oh six onward, that's still old. Those buildings, you know, those buildings are still damn old. But the architecture and the feeling and the smell in the air and the cable cars and the shopping, you know, and uh, watching people hustle and bustle, you know, shopping and Union Park and the pigeons and birds at Union Park and I mean it was a romantic classy city I loved San Francisco and when I used to hear Tony Bennett sing that song it really touched me it really touched me because I I could relate to the words that he sang now I mean I still love the song and he hearing him sing it but but now San Francisco's different you have to play a game to see how much poop you can avoid on the street and on the sidewalk. Uh, make sure that you don't go down the street downtown where there's a lot of shit from people on the sidewalk. That's the democratic government at their finest. And that's an example of San Francisco. The bums... Homeless people shitting on the sidewalk. I left my shit in San Francisco on the str on the street and sidewalks in front of the stores. I mean, in the gangs, there's gangs, there's car break-ins, you know, smash and grabs in cars and stores and. It's not the same. It's not the romantic city that I felt safe in to walk up and down the streets alone when I was in high school. Uh, it's not the same city. But anyway, I'm going to uh, put these links on uh, for you to listen to. Another, another one after the Tony Bennett one, there's another one uh, by uh, another song sung by Frank Sinatra, but most of these people, you know, Beverly Kinney, Doris Day, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, kind of were in the same era, and it was, it just, when you, when you listen to the song, 
listen to the words. Uh, it's just a, as as uh, Garrett said, it's just a, a smooth. It's it's a soothing, a soothing type of music that feeds and and lifts the soul and the spirit up. You don't have whores and and whorish looking outfits singing a lot of trash like they do nowadays. A lot of hip hop gangster kind of stuff. You know, I mean, this this era. That, that Beverly Kenny was in. Yeah, they had their problems then, but but this this was a time that you could go to the store and not worry about locking your 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 door. You didn't have to worry about even locking your house door. You didn't have to to you know lock your car door up at night. You know. It's not like it is nowadays. It was, back then it was, yeah, they had their problems, you know, with war or whatever. But, but it was, a, it, just, it was just seemed like it was just such a, a calmer, more peace. Uh, I don't know if it's more spiritual. I don't know if that's true to say or not. But, but I, I just think it is, it is a soothing type of music and uh, I hope that you, some of you can listen to it the links and uh, some of you that you know that don't want to worry about everything all day today listen to a couple of songs and just you know go back in time you know for a few minutes and just enjoy it anyway I hope that you're doing well um I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about this virus thing, but I hope that everybody's okay. I appreciate everybody that uh, leaves comments and listens to me. Uh, appreciate appreciate that. I, I do hope, you know, I, I sincerely hope that people that watch me are doing well themselves and your families and your friends. I don't have any desire for anybody to become ill or die or have accidents or whatever I, that's that's not in me but uh, I, I just you know we'll get through this thing uh, don't be stupid you know think about things and uh, maybe if something doesn't seem like it's that's that it's right for some reason maybe it isn't right maybe there's I don't know. Maybe there's an evil, evil thing that the government's doing. I, I don't know. You know, it's a possibility. The possibility. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. Anyway, all aboard, losers! All aboard, winners! Is that better? Of course it is. See ya.